As important as it is to have previsualized and researched several locations before the snow actually arrives, it is equally as important to go out and actually explore, even in locations that may not make sense. So I do occasionally come by some quite interesting compositions. So I come down to a lake and there's this boat here that is like frozen in the lake. Usually, in my experience, boat owners take the boats out of the lakes during winter. But this one here is still here and it makes for a perfect subject. So I have had the camera a little bit further back and trying to implement this tree here as some kind of foreground. And I, as you can see here, can walk on the frozen lake. It's not very deep, so if I go through, it's not bad, but it seems very, very solid. But I've come out here and I think I prefer this composition right here. It is quite simplistic. I'm using the wide angle for once and bringing in some of these branches here so I can use those to frame the photo. But I do find that the most interesting aspect is of course the boat right here. And then we have the sun coming up right there. Shooting at f11, ISO 100, I'm bracketing this one here, gives me a fast shutter speed. And I put it on two second timer when bracketing. So when I hit the shutter, I just go in and remove these two branches, take them out of the photo just with my hand, pull them away, and then I get a little bit cleaner photo. Quite a nice little winter composition right here. I did not foresee to find a boat frozen in a lake and I think it made for a lovely little photo. Likewise with this abstract photo I captured in a forest where I didn't expect anything interesting to be because there weren't any atmosphere. And with this photo I captured while driving from one location to another and came by this forest area full of snow. As you will see later in this video, I also flew the drone with a specific photo in mind. But once I was in the air, I actually found another that I totally haven't foreseen. And I wouldn't have got if it wasn't because I wanted to get the first photo. So lesson number two, the longer focal lengths are really, really good for winter photography. It of course still depends on the specific landscape that you are photographing. But for me in Denmark, that has predominantly flat, small hilly, rural landscapes. The telephoto lens is just perfect for capturing those distant details. Equally as important due to the perspective compression that you can get with a telephoto lens, you can use all those small hills and mounds in the foreground and kind of like get that compression effect so that they stand out more and create a kind of depth to the scene. So I've come by a couple of lone trees out here, like just two lone trees. And I've had to put on the 50 to 400 millimeter and zoom way, way in because they are very far away. There are some hills on the fields in front of it that I think could make for quite an interesting or beautiful, calm, minimalist foreground with all this snow. The reason why I'm standing with the back is because I'm standing with the back to the wind, because the wind is ah, not too bad right now, but it was just before. <laughs> so I'm shooting at f13, ISO 320, because I don't have as much light as I would like to, and due to the wind, everything vibrates a bit, and that gives me a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second. So very simple, beautiful, calm photo. And I'm not going to wait around and hope for the sun to come out because there's like a, a big cloud moving from over here that way. So that will take quite a long time.
I really like these two photos and how the lines in the foreground of both of them helps to create depth. Depth is a funny and interesting thing and a compositional tool you can utilize to make your photos more interesting. If you want to learn more about depth and composition in landscape photography, be sure to get my ebook on exactly that topic. Along with depth, I cover eight other compositional tools that you can use when you compose your landscape photographs. And in the last chapter, I bring everything together and analyze some of my own photos. If you're happy about the first ebook, you can always go ahead and get the second, where I cover even more compositional tools. There are links to both of them down in the description of this video. So lesson number three is to embrace minimalism, as you've just seen. Snow does help simplifying the landscapes, no matter if you photograph big vistas, buildings, lone trees or horses galloping through the snow. This next sequence is especially cool, and I captured one of my favorite photos from this winter. So I'm right now sitting in the car flying the drone because it's snowy and cold outside and wow have I found some beautiful minimalist scenes. So out here you can not see it at all but there is like a, a tree standing out here that I really like and then I have like this black road a little bit further up the hill so it looks as if the road is above the tree when I use the long lens on the drone. And then I have another tree right here in front of me, beautiful big old oak and it is standing just at a Y section of the road and that just makes it a great focal point and having two roads leading straight down to it. Looks beautiful. Just had a lot of snow, a snow shower coming in. The drone is just working perfectly in these snow showers. I don't know why but there's not like a single drop of snow on the drone when I pull it back. And right now the sun is coming out, so I'll get a few more photos with this. It is important to be aware with the settings of your drone that even though you have a quite fast shutter speed, that you make sure to apply the proper aperture depending on what lens you are using and if you can change the aperture. Because if you close down the aperture too much, you usually get quite soft photos with the drone. And obviously, also make sure to exposure compensate a little bit because it is snow so you will come out with some quite dark photos if you just have it on auto exposure. Here are some minimalist drone photos. that one lone tree along with the road and the car there in the background. I like that very much. And it of course looks brilliantly next to this other photo that I also captured. Lesson number four, yes. Embrace the drone if you have one. The drone is great for getting an elevated position. And when looking straight down, you can, as an example, fly over lakes or icy areas and capture all the different abstract details that you can get in icy landscapes. Just look at the patterns I got in this super cool lake. The straight down photos almost looks like marble or stone patterns. And in this specific photo, I see a ghost or some other character. So definitely, if you have a drone, fly it out, experiment, of course, well within the law, and explore with it once you're in the air, because you never know what you're going to find. And in this specific example here, I was just driving through some fields, and then I got this row of trees in these foggy yet sunny conditions, and I captured this photo right here. Lesson number five. You need to edit your winter photos to make them work. Yes, it is notoriously hard to capture a properly lit winter or snowy 
or icy photo straight out of camera. And besides nailing the brightness in post-processing, it is super important that you also clean your photos. And I'd argue that will actually make or break them. As mentioned a few times in my previous winter videos, cleaning up all those twigs, branches, stones or other contrasting elements in the snow is important to make a more clean and calm photo. It's not always super easy to do it properly, especially around the trunks of trees, but that's one of the many editing techniques you can learn in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. Besides cleaning the photos, I teach you how to use the programs, luminosity masking, dodging and burning, focus stacking, and advanced blending, and much, much, much more. I generally just teach you how to respect the light while also get those beautiful landscape photos through editing. There is a discount code along with the link down in the description of this video. So lesson number six, snow and blue skies actually work really, really well together. Contrary to an overcast sky, the sun or the light helps highlight details in the snow, making the photo less flat. Likewise, having the blue sky, it's still a simple photo, but you don't compromise the sense of minimalism. You can of course have white clouds in those photos, as the white will complement the snow. Having a white overcast sky may make the photo a little bit too boring, and having a colorful golden hour sky with burning clouds may make you lose the sense of minimalism. Not that that is bad in and of itself, it's just something else. You can also shoot from a lower angle and include the sparkling bokeh effect from the snow for added interest in the foreground if you have direct light on the snow. And finally, lesson number seven. Just because you have the perfect snowy conditions with the most epic sunrise does not mean that you get a good photo. Not every composition or location will benefit from such conditions. Just because a forest is full of snow doesn't mean it automatically becomes photogenic. You will still need some light or atmosphere to create depth and separation, just like in all other landscape photography. Generally, I found that winter photography is actually pretty hard. It's relatively doable in like Iceland, the Faroe Islands, or when sitting in a zodiac in an Arctic environment where the landscapes are already fairly clean. But when you add trees, areas with heather, that sticks up over the snow, bushes and other elements into the scene, it suddenly becomes a much more demanding and complex process and that will require patience and skill. And it's okay that something sometimes is hard and that you have to learn something new. And I gotta admit, I was surprised about how hard and how inefficient I have actually been with my winter photography here in Denmark, considering I went out nine times. If you haven't already checked my other winter videos, be sure to do so. You can also subscribe to my newsletter to get notifications on new videos, workshops, new products, and other interesting things that I think is worth for you to see. And of course, if you want to learn even more about composition or editing, be sure to use the links down in the description of this video. I hope you learned a lot. Thanks for watching. See you next time.